What's up guys? What I wanted to do in this video is actually talk about whether or not the 1911 is still competitive in the concealed carry world. Uh, we all know about the 1911 in uh, war movies as well as just all of the history that surrounds these firearms. This, of course, is my TSOS 1911A1. You guys have seen it on the channel before. It's been in a few videos that I've done. This is a great example of what a 1911 should be, in my opinion. Uh, very reliable. It is fun to shoot. And, of course, the configuration of this gun is more along the traditional. Uh, basically, this gun is a clone of the A1 carried by U.S. soldiers. <laughs> back during World War II and all the way up until the 1980s. Of course, we have more of the modern twist on the 1911 with some more upgrades. This, of course, is my TSOS 1911 Carry Stainless. Absolutely beautiful gun, has the three dot sights, skeletonized hammer and trigger, uh, extended beaver tail, safety, ambi safety, all the bells and whistles that most people want these days on their firearms. Of course, when we're talking about a 1911, we're talking about a gun design that is well over 100 years old. Uh, this is something that John Moses Browning, as we all know, created, and it was adopted by the military back in, of course, 1911, and served our nation for quite some time. There are a lot of folks that still carry these. Okay, you can find these guns out there in various configurations for specifically targeting the concealed carry market, just like this one here, of course, 1911 carry. It's literally in the name. And is this something that is an option for you? And the answer of that is, of course. Uh, the 1911 is one that a lot of people love. Uh, the trigger on these things are absolutely amazing compared to a lot of other firearms. If you get a good model, I mean, the trigger on a 1911 is pretty much the standard, okay? You just have that crisp break, uh, you know, very, very, very simple trigger. It is a straight back press instead of a rotating trigger, uh, with is what you see on most of your polymer gums these days and it is absolutely a pleasure to shoot. Of course, some of the older guns, they did have heavier triggers and things like that, but more of your newer models are coming out with much better triggers. And there are advantages to the 1911, and then there are disadvantages to the 1911. Of course, the trigger is one that I would obviously say is an advantage, compared to a lot of your polymer guns these days. We all know, like the Glock 19 here, this is my Glock 19 Gen 4, been in several of my videos. The trigger on them, it has that sponginess till it hits that wall, and then finally that break, okay? Compared to the 1911, okay? Much different. If I were to press the trigger there, very little take up, I hit that wall, build the pressure, the hammer falls. Okay, very nice trigger on that gun. Even with some of the newer firearms that are coming out on the market, this is my Sig Sauer P365. Now the trigger on this, still you have that, quite a bit of take up compared to the 1911. You can see that, how much that moves, and not to mention the fact that it rotates. Instead of it being a straight back press, that trigger, rotates. There is a little bit more of an angle to that compared to the trigger on a 1911. You can see there straight back. And you hit that wall, same principle, you hit that wall and it will go off. Okay. Now an advantage to the polymer guns is the fact that these things are much lighter. Much lighter than the steel frame of a 1911. Okay, that is something that is just unquestioned. Okay, if you are not someone that likes a heavy gun, your choice may be something along the lines of a polymer firearm. And there are tons of these things on the market these days. I've got there the videos talking about them. Go over, check them out. The 1911, of course, the caliber. 
and that's something else to talk about this particular gun is chambered in the 45 ACP a very capable round uh, two world wars uh, is one of the common phrases when we talk about the 1911s that these guns won both of these are chambered in that 45 and with it being chambered in a 45 this is a an advantage or a disadvantage depending on how you look at it of course the 45 is a very capable round uh, it is unquestionable a very capable round compared to a nine millimeter now of course a lot of the technology today with the nine millimeter caliber nine millimeter cartridges most of those cartridges can be as effective as the traditional ball 1911 uh, 45 ACP rounds. Now, if you were, of course, getting some of the more elaborate 45 ACP rounds, yes, it's going to step the effectiveness of that 45 up as well. Uh, of course, the trade off is ammo capacity. Okay, Glock 19, as you see here, this is a 15 round standard capacity firearm. Even my SIG P365XL. This is a standard capacity of 12 rounds with flush fitting magazine. Of course, this being both of these being 9mm, which 9mm is a capable round as well, especially with a lot of the new cartridges out there. So the polymers do have an advantage for having larger ammo capacity. You know, even comparing the Glock and the SIG, 15 rounds here, 12 rounds here, but you can see the size difference between these two firearms and of course yes you can get higher capacity magazines for all of these guns you know you can get 15 20 round magazines for these firearms here you can also get 10 round magazines for your 1911 of course since they are single stack what you would see for them typically is they would extend straight down from the firearm you know making that grip that much longer of course a big topic when we're talking about concealed carry firearms is their concealability okay is a 1911 easy to conceal that depends just like anything else it really depends on how you dress it really depends on the types of clothing you wear it depends on your body type and things like that now if we look at a 1911 and compare the thickness of the 1911 to the glock you're going to see that there is a substantial difference. Okay, the 1911 is much thinner than the Glock 19. Okay, it also, this particular model is longer. However, if I were to compare the uh, carry model, which you can see there, let's get these fairly close. Now, there's not a lot of difference there, but the 1911 is much thinner overall now when we get further into like the sig 365 xl we compare that and you're going to see that the thickness on them is much closer okay much closer on the thickness and your grip length okay one of the big things when it comes to concealed carry is the grip on a firearm i am a proponent a big proponent you always want to get a firearm that you can get a good grip on. Okay, there's a lot of folks out there that will get these super subcompacts that you cannot get all of your fingers on, where you've got one or two fingers just barely hanging on. Okay, don't buy those guns. Get a gun that will fit your hand that you can get that full grip on. Okay, I've talked about that in other videos on my channel. You're not going to be as accurate if you can't get a good grip on that gun. Okay, 1911, obviously, the grip on that gun, not a problem. Very easy to grip. It feels good in the hands, in my opinion. That angle, the angle of that gun, it just points very naturally, in my opinion. Of course, there again, I, I believe that the Glock, you know, the Glock feels good as well, just for me. That's just my preference, too. You know, so the 1911 is still, in my opinion, a very valid firearm. One drawback to the 1911s, and it's not only with the 1911s, is their manual safety. Okay, Regardless of the type of firearm that you carry, you need to practice with your gun, train with your gun, to the point where you know 
that the gun is reliable and that you have built the muscle memory to sweep that safety off. Whenever you go to draw that firearm from your holster, especially under stress, if you have not built in that muscle memory to disengage that safety, it is not going to provide any kind of benefit for you if you need it, okay? There again, if you're in a fight, if you're trying to protect yourself, okay, you've got that safety engaged, you draw it, you point, that safety is going to do its job. It is not going to let that hammer fall, no matter what you do, until you sweep that safety off. Under stress, a lot of folks will forget to do that. And there again, it is not just the 1911. It is any gun with a manual safety. Okay, I've talked about that in other videos as well. That's something that you really need to be aware of. Okay, different manufacturers are also going to have different levels of reliability when it comes to 1911s. Okay, not all manufacturers are equal. Okay, some guns are going to be much more reliable than others. I strongly recommend that no matter what you carry, even if it's a polymer gun, whether it's a 1911 or one of these newer modern polymer firearms, you need to get that gun to the range and you need to shoot that firearm to know whether or not it is going to be reliable when you need it to be. Okay, that is the top thing right there, guys. Some 1911s, believe it or not, especially when they're new, these guns need a break-in period. I've talked about that in other videos. I did a video on the purpose of the break-in period on my channel. I've actually done a couple about those, and I'll put a link to them where you guys can go find those videos. These guns, again, are a 100-year-plus design. Completely different design than what we have today. With modern manufacturing, with the tolerances that they're putting into these guns now, many of these guns will need a break-in period out of the box. Okay, they will not effectively, not all of them, many of them will not effectively feed reliably until you get a good round count through them. Magazines play a big role. They play a big role in any of your other firearms as well, but particularly in a 1911, that's that big 45 ACP round. Now they do make 1911s in 9mm. A lot of different ones out there on the markets. A lot of beautiful guns out there. Now, your choice, again, is going to go back to whether you're wanting to carry something like this in 9mm to where you have 8 or 10 round capacity, depending on the magazines that you have, or whether or not you're going to go with something like this in 9mm to where you have a lot higher capacity. The choice is going to be yours to fit your lifestyle, to fit how you go about your daily life, to fit your comfort level. Some folks are perfectly happy with a six shot revolver. Other folks, they want 15, 20 round magazines in their firearm. It just really depends. But guys, is it still relative? In my opinion, yes. Is it the right fit for you? I cannot answer that question. You need to decide, decide that for yourself. But guys, this is just a quick video that I wanted to do. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I would be interested in hearing from you there. I would also encourage you to check out all of the links down below. You can kind of help support the channel by visiting the affiliate links. Also go over and get you some good coffee. Visit my website at boomsticktactical.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.